What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Extra W Diaries. My name is Justin. Just a short little video today. I was working on a whole different video, and then somebody posted the latest Watchtower study article. And the Watchtower had a little jab at apostates. Now, normally I don't do uh, rebuttal type videos, but these guys are just on a roll lately. And there's so much going on in this one little paragraph than that jab at apostates. So I just want to dive into it a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. So the paragraph starts out like this. How can we safeguard ourselves from following the course of ridiculers? One way is to avoid associating with those who show a critical attitude. So they start out by saying that it's bad to be critical. Now just think about that for a second. What does it mean to have a critical attitude? Does it mean that you're a hater? No, that's, that's something completely different. To be critical means that you examine things. You scrutinize things. You dissect things with logic and then create an opinion about it. Now, there's definitely times when it's not appropriate to be critical. If a preschool child walks up to you, has drawn you a picture and hands it to you, yeah, probably not the best time to be critical. If somebody is giving you a gift, probably not the best time to be critical. But the majority of the time, you probably should be critical. Even something as simple as trying to decide what movie you want to go see in the theater. Got to be a little bit critical for that. Deciding what car you want to buy. If you're on that dealer lot, you bet you, you should be critical. Deciding what diet you want to try. Uh, yeah, you should be critical. <laughs> and of course, when you have an organization that's directing you, that is deciding what you believe, deciding how you should live your life, making decisions that have a big impact on your life and the life of your kids. Uh, yeah, you should be critical. So right here is an example of classic black and white thinking. Being critical is neither good nor bad. It's a gray area. Sometimes it's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. Here they're saying, don't do it at all. Just be a, just be a follower. Just be a sheep. The paragraph continues. This means that we do not listen or read anything from apostates. We realize if we are not careful, we could easily develop a critical spirit and begin to doubt Jehovah and the direction we receive through his organization. So obviously you got your little jab at apostates there. That's cool, whatever. That's expected of them. But look at the language here. That's what's more interesting. Look at how they use the word we. They are thinking for you. They are speaking for you. They are making decisions for you. The way that they have formulated these sentences, every time they say the word we, you can't help but throw yourself into that equation. We don't want to listen to anything from apostates. Now you have an outside source telling you what you want or don't want. We realize we could develop a critical spirit. We could begin to doubt Jehovah. Look at how they use fear. They've already made the connection of being critical to being an apostate. So that already adds a layer of fear there. Now they're saying if you're critical, if you begin to doubt, if you begin to ask too many questions, you could begin to doubt Jehovah. To a Jehovah's Witness, that is a death sentence. They've got you locked in right there. The paragraph ends with this. To avoid such a course, we can ask ourselves, do I usually have something negative to say when we receive new direction or explanations? Am I inclined to find faults with those taking the lead? When we are quick to correct such tendencies in ourselves, Jehovah will be pleased with us. Man, there's a lot going on in those last few sentences. Let's just dive into it. So again, look at the language that they're using. They're saying, don't be critical of us. That's bad. You don't want to be like apostate, being critical. But, but, do be critical of yourself. One of the questions that they want you to ask yourself is, am I inclined to find fault 
with those taking the lead. Now, just think about that for a second, because you really should. You should have a critical attitude with people that have that much power over your life. You should be critical of anybody that can make a new policy that has a direct impact on the life of you and your kids. And then right after that, it talks about being quick to correct these tendencies. So this is just classic Watchtower installing mental roadblocks for you. They're teaching you how to think. They're teaching you, really, not to trust yourself. If you even begin to say, man, why did they make that decision? Why did the governing body member say that? If you even begin to go there, those roadblocks come up, do not proceed any further. Because if you do, well, I mean, hey, you've seen the pictures, right? You've seen the Revelation book. You've seen all those articles that show fireballs. You've seen people trapped under uh, building rubble during Armageddon. Don't be that guy. And then they end it by saying that if you do all these things, if you think the way that they want you to think, you are going to make Jehovah happy. So in other words, if you refrain from criticizing us, but you do criticize yourself, then you, my friend, will have... Right, let me stop myself, because it's never for sure, is it? It's always based on works. Got to have those hours and fill service. Got to comment often enough in your own words. So if you do all the works, if you do all that showing man how spiritual you are, then maybe, just, just maybe, you will have some real estate in paradise. So let's just, let's just go deep for a second, okay? Hold on tight. Because I bet you that before this Watchtower study is started, the congregation will stand up together and they will sing a song. And I bet you that that song is a slow-moving, classical, orchestra-type music. And I bet you that the pacing of that song, the tones, the frequency of that music, will put most of those people, if not all of those people, into a kind of meditative, relaxed, almost drowsy sort of state. Do you know what that is? That's called your brain moving into what they call a theta wave state. And when your brain is in a theta wave state, don't take my word for it, look it up. When your brain is in that theta wave state, outside information can now sink into your subconscious mind just a little bit easier. In other words, you're more susceptible. This is why sometimes college professors will tell you that when you're studying, listen to classical music because it'll help you to retain that new information easier. So you see, with things like that, with paragraphs like this, this is why it's so hard to wake up people. This is why some people that are trapped in that physically in, mentally questioning phase are finding it hard to get out of that phase, coming up with all these mental roadblocks. It's cognitive dissonance. This is why, because the Watchtower has done everything they can to make sure that that programming is digging in deep. They want you to trust them with all your faith. And don't you dare even think about trusting yourself. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Let me know what you guys think. For me, it's interesting to look back and just see all the mental conditioning that they are installing in people. And it's kind of sad that as witnesses, all this stuff is going way over our heads. Actually, no, no, it was going into our heads. But on the outside looking in, it's very clear what they're doing. Very, very clear. Installing all these mental roadblocks in people. Telling you how to think. Telling you what not to think. Teaching you how to criticize yourself. 
but not to criticize them. Anybody out there that's watching that has family members that are stuck in, th this is why. This is the kind of information that these people are taking in on a weekly basis. And if they're a good witness and they do all the daily texts and all that stuff, then this is the type of information that they're taking in multiple times a day. The programming keeps going. I got a whole nother video that I'm, I've just started working on that's just about mental condition. That's probably going to be a really deep one. But yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting just to look at it and, and just see exactly what they're doing. You know, now that we have eyes to see, so to speak. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Take it easy on yourselves. The next one that I should have been working on is uh, about marriage and the toxic relationships of, of the witnesses and how we were set up really to enable toxic relationships. 